Good pause Pokemon Mossbit. For those of you who do not know me, I am Six Foot Hex, and I have for y'all today a pretty good RU battle that I had on Showdown the other night. Unfortunately, though, I am going to be on the other side of the field, so I am RVD, and my opponent is Kingler Sucks. Now, looking at threats on my opponent's side of the field, Spirit Tomb and Buffalon are really the two main things I'm going to have to watch out for, depending on what kind of sets they are. But seeing that nothing on his team can really take a hit from my choice Ben and Entei, I am going to be leading off with that, as he's going to be leading off with the Uxie. And it turns out that his Yuxi is going to be faster than me, which has me thinking he's either a dual screen set or he is a choice scarf set. And the fact that he switches out this turn and switches directly into his aggron just confirms the fact to me that he more than likely is a choice scarf variant. Because if he was dual screens, then obviously he would have stayed in and gone for the reflect or for the stealth rocks. But as he switches directly into the aggron, I am going to pay him back for getting fully paralyzed the first turn. And I'm going to be able to burn him as he then misses the head smash on my Ferrisuit, which... My Ferrisuit is max defense, max HP with the Evil Light, and I do resist the head smash, so I don't really know if that miss really mattered, because it is 80 accuracy, so it does have a good chance to miss. But as he brings in the Buffalon, I get a Blair Spikes. He is then going to go for the Substitute as I go for the Gyro Ball, and it turns out that his Buffalon is actually a sub SD set, which means this Buffalon has just become major problem number one, and I have to somehow find a way to prevent this Buffalon from being behind a substitute once he does take out my Ferrisseed. So I'm going to stay in and just keep going for the Gyro Ball, hoping that maybe I can crit him or just do something to him to prevent him from being behind a substitute. As he goes for another Sword Sands, I'm thinking that he more than likely is going to try to get up to plus 6. So expecting him just to go for another substitute and not go straight for the offensive move, I'm actually going to go for a Lair Spikes. Then this turn, knowing that again he wouldn't go for the offensive move, I'm going to go for the Gyro Ball. As he does go for the plus 6 with Sword Zans, I'm going to be able to just barely live the Earthquake and in return break his substitute, which I guess this is where him missing the Head Smash might have mattered, although I don't know how much a Head Smash would have actually done to my Ferrisseed, but I'm going to get off a bit of damage with the Gyro Ball and expecting him to go for the Earthquake. I'm going to bring in my Rotom, and thanks to that bit of damage I got off with the Gyro Ball, I'm really confident that this Volt Switch will be able to break it and expecting him to just more than likely go for the Head Charge as opposed to going for another substitute. I'm going to fought off my Ferrisseed. Pharisee, and that is exactly what happens allowing me to now bring in my Rotom and hopefully knock him out with the Thunderbolt that way I can keep my Rotom and make sure that this Buffalo will no longer be around in this battle but he just barely lives on 4% HP and knocks me out with the head charge in hindsight maybe I should have brought in my Hemonchan to mock punch but I honestly thought that my Rotom Thunderbolt would be able to knock it out and obviously that is not the case but on the double down I'm gonna bring back in my Entei as he brings in his Rotom and at the amount of HP my Entei is at, I can live a Thunderbolt. So on the off chance that he tried to do that, I'm just going to go for the Flare Blitz. But he does make the better play by going for the Volt Switch and foddering off his Aggron. As he brings in the Uxie, he's just going to take this opportunity to go for the Stealth Rocks. As I get off a huge hit with the Flare Blitz. And the fact that he's going to stay in and keep going for the Stealth Rocks just further confirms the fact that he is indeed a Choice Scarf Uxie. Because obviously if he was dual screens, then he would take this opportunity to go for Reflect and go for a Light Screen. But no, he just keeps going for the stealth rocks allowing me to easily knock him out with the second flare blitz unfortunately though at this point my Entei is basically useless to me so i have to leave it in for fodder to this roll time as he clean knocks me out with the bolt switch considering the fact that i was at 12 percent hp and obviously that crit didn't matter but he's going to Volt Switch into the Spirit Tomb, which I still do not know what kind of set the Spirit Tomb is. So I'm going to bring in my Jordagon, and if he does have the will o -Wisp, I know I should be faster than him, so I can get off a huge hit with the Dragon Claw, then possibly take him out with another one. But he goes for the Shadow Ball, and that does way too much damage to my Jordagon, which automatically tells me that Spirit Tomb is specially offensive, which is kind of interesting, just because most Spirit Tombs are Black Glasses or Choice Banded, or are Rest Talk with Calm Mind. But... I'm going to be able to go for the Earthquake, predicting him to bring the Pharisee, then get on my Stealth Rocks to ensure that that Spirit Tomb will die off to its next switching. Above that, I'm going to be able to get off a bit of damage on the Rotom when he does switch it in. So after he paralyzes me, I'm going to bring in my Hitmonchan because I'm pretty positive a Drain Punch will be able to knock him out. But I end up making a misclick on Foresight instead of the Drain Punch, and it turns out that Pharisee actually lives this, which just goes to show you how bulky Pharisee really is. And unfortunately, I do not want any of these hazards being up, so I'm going to go straight for the Rapid Spin. Thankfully, he did not switch out into a Spirit Tomb to get to allow him to get a free switch into the Roll Tom. Which, at this point, the only thing that I need to do is get off some damage on the Roll Tom with a Mock Punch from my Hitmonchan, and I will hopefully be able to bring it down to a point where my Sucker Punch from Jodagon will be able to knock him out. But he's just going to leave in his Pharaoh Seed basically as fodder, allowing me to knock him out with the Drain Punch after he ends up getting up one layer of spikes, which really is going to be too crucial to my team. 
So he then brings in the Spirit Tomb, which does die off to the entry hazards. And at this point, his last is going to be the Rotom. And as I said, all I need to do is go for the Mock Punch, but I get fully paralyzed. Now, I don't know if my Dredagon will be able to live a Thunderbolt. So the next best thing that I can do right now is bring in my Slow King and go for the Toxic to hopefully be able to Toxic stall him. And seeing that the Thunderbolt only did about 53% HP, after the Regenerator HP that I'm going to get back once I switch out, I should be at enough HP to the point where I can live another Thunderbolt and just slack off until eventually he does die off to the Toxic, which is what I'm going to try to do. But it turns out that I'm actually going to be able to live another Thunderbolt with my Drodagon, which means if I get paralyzed this turn as I try to go for the Sucker Punch, I have another chance to hit him with the Sucker Punch. Luckily though, I don't get paralyzed, I live the Thunderbolt, and this ensures me the victory just because if he does take me out this turn with the Thunderbolt, Rotom will die off to the Toxic and I don't have to rely on my Slow King to not get critted by a Thunderbolt. But it turns out that my Dredagon does not get paralyzed and I'm able to knock him out with a second Sucker Punch and that's going to be the very narrow 2 all victory in my favor. So yeah, that was definitely a fun intense battle, a bit hacksy as you can see. Uh, or as you saw, sorry, but it was definitely a lot of fun and I feel the hacks kind of evened out. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to Pokemon Schmidt, and feel free to come check me out. And with that, I am out of here. Later, everybody.